Hey folks, so this is going to be a slightly different video from the last couple. I know I said I was working on a uh, another Blade Runner pistol. Um, I kind of hinted at that with the little teaser video. Here's that. It's a little snub nose version. Um, that's a work in progress. <laughs> we'll see when, when I actually get to doing some of this. Um, one of the issues that I ran into with that was as you can see, there was a lot of stringing because of how I printed this piece. Um, I'm going to be experimenting with some XDC 3D in the future, so who knows? Maybe this will work out. I also think I glued this part on backwards, but oh well, life goes on. Now, uh, what I'm actually shooting today is a very unique video, and I realized this. Um, recently, I got done, finished painting a Warhammer 40K. Uh, army <clears throat> for a friend of mine. Uh, he did pay me thankfully for it, uh, but that was a bit of a nightmare. But it was his orc army. This is uh, one of the minis that I painted for him. Uh, and this light is not great for this, but this is a snick rot and he's not done yet. But he's a great example of what I kind of want to talk about today. Um, along with that, uh, I, last night I finished painting this mini up. Um, this is a mini for a D&D Pathfinder game I'm in. Uh, another one of the players asked me if I'd paint up the mini for him. Um, and I was like, sure. And so I got this last week. Uh, our DM brought this by because he happens to be in my Tuesday night D&D game. And the client, friend in question, um had him bring this over and he sent me over he sent, emailed me some uh, concept art so this was actually what spurred my desire to want to talk about this video um, <clears throat> so as the title suggests um, this video is all about how to design your mini on Hero Forge um, and I've got a number of different kinds of minis here as you can see um, these are some Reaper Bones minis here uh, this is also a Bones Mini that I painted up, and so is the big guy in the back. It's a 40k uh, Storm Surge, 40k Orc, and then these three happen to be Pewter uh, Infinity Minis. And this one is a WizKids uh, Displacer Beast. Um, so I wanted to talk about the complications when it comes to designing your Mini. Um, so you'll see with these, these are all monocast. Um, I do think the Displacer Beasts whiz kids actually cast in multiple parts in the, and then pre-assembles before packaging and sending out. Um, but my understanding is if you, you know, take a good look at that, it's, it's one piece, and you'll notice that this is how it comes. Uh, ready to paint, pre-primed. You don't need to prime the WizKids ones. And this, you'll notice by the pose, with the exception of these tentacles, which are fairly flexible, um, is relatively easy to get every at every angle to paint this. Um, you know, it provides a, a level of access to pretty much every part of the mini, um, which isn't too bad. I, I don't mind painting something like this. It's a little complicated. This is a female Oni from the same WizKids, or not the WizKids lines, but Reaper Miniatures. Um, I actually painted this up to use as a Tiefling Barbarian, and I hadn't quite realized how much taller this mini is compared to a standard character. Um, you'll notice here, sorry I'm using my hands to deflect from the bright white light that's back there that I thought was going to help and it's clearly not. Uh, but you'll notice this is a standard 28 millimeter miniature and this is fairly large. Um, I may end up using her for a different campaign instead of the one I wanted to. This was my mini from the last campaign. And this is a Hero Forge mini. Um, some of you have seen their stuff in the past. You've, you know, maybe taken a, a gander. Let's see if I can get it to focus on her, not my fingers. Um, but this was a ninja character I was playing in a different game. 
game that we just wrapped up that the this person was also involved in that game uh, their um, this is their new character this is my old character uh, my new character I have not ordered from Hero Forge yet uh, for those of you that don't know what Hero Forge is Hero Forge is a service where you can go online and design your own mini so um, these three are Hero Forge minis get these in position here um, so these are Hero Forge minis uh, each one was designed I these are two of mine this is actually for a game that we never ended up playing it's a black dragonborn this one will end up getting stripped but what I want to talk about is the posing that you choose for your mini in regards to painting um, a lot of times we don't really think about those things in terms of how something is posed or what position it's going to be in when it comes time to paint. Um, as you can see, this mini, the one I designed, has a very open stance. It makes very for very easy access for painting it. Um, there's no real spots where it's going to be difficult to get. Uh, I think the most difficult part was getting up underneath the hair here. The ponytail um, to paint some of that gold and red and black that are up under there for the scabbard on her back. That was probably the most difficult part about that mini. Uh, this mini, when I designed it, I'm, I, I did the same thing. I tried to keep a very open pose thinking about how the positioning and stance of this mini was going to be in regards to painting. What what was going to be easy, How where I'm going to be able to get. As you can see, this has got a lot of like weird metallics on it, almost pearlescent effect. Um, I'm going to be dunking this mini in um, some simple green to strip it down so I can repaint it. Um, it'll be interesting to see if the simple green has any effect on the PLA or the, the filament that they used. Um, but yeah, all these, they're designed at Hero Forge um, and they are 3D printed. So you design it, you 3D print your mini, and then from there you actually get the opportunity to, you know, purchase it. Um, Hero Forge recently added that you can purchase the uh, STL files so that you can print them yourselves. I think they're STL files. They may be uh, resin printer files now, which I know are a different format. But as you can see, there's there's a big contrast here. Now this one, I did not design. This was designed by the, the my friend, and this is the pose he wanted. Now, the thing I realized and ran into is, especially with the combination of the hood and the mask that he's wearing <coughs> you'll notice that that's kind of awkward and then with the hands in the way here getting a paintbrush which I yes have a paintbrush on hand trying to get a paintbrush in here to be able to paint and get everything is tricky being able to make sure that you don't hit anything else while trying to do fine detail work. These, there's not no issue. You can get right up close and paint where you need to paint and do what you need to do. Same thing here. There's may, maybe a little bit of awkwardness down in these areas. You'll notice this one, which is this was not pre-painted. I painted this mini, uh, but it's the same thing. It's it's you can get pretty pretty close oh. pretty close to everywhere with this mini even this big guy now this one was a multi-part mini um, the wings are a separate part as is the tail on the back um, those are separate parts that come with this mini um, yes it is on a giant giant base with some washers because these wings make him very very back heavy uh, I believe his head is also a separate piece when you buy this mini and his arms these two forearms these lower ones are also separate um, and this one I painted with an airbrush for the majority of it uh, doing the wings doing everything else um, and then the uh, all the fine detail work was all done by hand, um, but that's how I got the reddish skin. This kind of a, a Baylor Balrog kind of. Um, this is also a multi-part mini. Um, this is a, a Games Workshop's Find Cast 
Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it is a god-awful, god-awful method for them to be doing things. He's not attached to the base yet, so I will remove him. But the head is separate from the rest of the body. Um, I believe this arm... This arm is a separate piece, and the backpack is a separate piece, I believe, originally. Um, and it is just god-awful to have to clean up a fine cast mini. This is for that same orc army. Uh, once again, it's the majority of that army is done, but I'm not quite done yet. This is one of the, the minis that I still have left to finish. Um, but it is a multi-piece. So a lot of these pieces, the backpack, the head... Um, got painted separate from everything else and then got glued in place. Uh, I did pre-glue the arms on. Um, this arm, I believe, is the one that got uh, needed to be glued on, although I can't see the seam line. Maybe that was already on there. I don't remember. It was a little while ago when I assembled this one, so I don't quite remember how he went together. These... Oops, put him back on his base. These, as you can see, have a lot of cross-body uh, design work to them. Um, and these are all pewter miniatures, multi-assembly pewter miniatures. Uh, the main body and the head are separate. The backpack, I believe, is separate. Yeah, backpack separate. The arms are separate. The scabbard is separate. So this basically is just the body, and then the head's on a small sprue. The, sh the arms and the, the swords are on a small sprue as well. But you can see that these are really more so designed to be painted than assembled, I have found. So this is uh, a little bit more complicated in how it's done. It's, it's really designed to be painted than assembled after the fact, uh, which is why there are these tight sections that are maybe a little bit more tricky to get into. Um, the same thing here. It was a multi-part mini that came, uh, I believe, with... Oh, actually, this one might be... No, uh, this arm was separate from everything else. So really designed to be assembled, se uh, painted, then assembled. Uh, this guy, for sure, was a multi-part, as this arm here and this scabbard were separate from everything else uh, and it once again designed to be painted then assembled after the fact um, so that way you actually have access into some of these tighter sections so <clears throat> just something to keep in mind when you're designing a character or a mini on hero forges think about what kind of restrictions you're going to have in terms of painting uh, even when using uh, this is the citadel um, painting base grabber, I don't know, paint mini holder, um, getting in and being able to get at things from specific angles without accidentally touching something else can actually be really, really difficult, especially when you design your mini. So just think about that in the future for when you're actually working on designing something via Hero Forge or Shapeways, or if you're even designing it yourself. If you're, if you're going to do something with a really kind of like dynamic position, try to make sure that if you can, design it so that it can be made in multiple pieces so you can paint it and then assemble it. Um, that way it's just a little bit easier. Also maybe think about that if you're, you know, commissioning someone else to paint because it it's, you're actually, you know, making their life slightly more difficult and they may have quoted you a price and signed a contract and then the mini comes out and it's like this. Luckily this is just for a friend, this wasn't actually a commission, um, this is for a campaign I'm in, um, but yeah, something like this. Um, had these not come to me unassembled or had they been um, mono builds, um, it would have been a difficult task, needless to say. So yeah, that's all I've got for today. Um, you know, I do a lot of mini painting. I do a lot of mini work. Um, if you're interested, leave me a hit down in the bottom or a comment down in the bottom. Give it a like, a subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm trying to get this up and running more frequently, more in depth. Um, and hopefully I'll be getting either uh, better audio equipment in the near future. Uh, or more lighting. Uh, this camera is great for what it is, though it can only record for so long. Um, it's actually perfect. 
uh, for short format videos. So yeah, leave a like, a subscribe, hit the bell, turn on your notifications, and in the words of the Miniac, paint more minis.